Well, hello, this is Josephine Coninio. I'm going to talk about the physics of light and three color systems in use today. Sir Isaac Newton discovered focusing sunlight through a triangular wedge of glass or prism would separate the light wavelengths into the visible bands of color that we see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We also call uh, indigo blue violet these days. So you see the sunlight passes through the prism and it actually separates those colors and we actually see the color wheel as a result of that. So without light, there would be no color. Light hits our pupils in the retina, lining the back of our eye, which contains receptor cells called cones. So we perceive color through cones, and then rods perceive light and dark, or the value. So the color is the wavelength that we see actually ref reflected back from a surface while all the other colors are absorbed, as in this exam example of an apple. So here's the sun, it, it shines light. All of the wavelengths of light are uh, being reflected you know, because the sunlight has pure light, all the wavelengths. And all the colors are absorbed except this red color that reflects back to us. So there are three distinct systems in use today used for three different media. The traditional, which applies to paint and pigments, and light, which is used for the medium in the additive system for web design, color TVs, monitors, etc., and ink, which is the subtractive system, and that's for printing. So each color wheel has a unique set of um, primary colors, a trio of primary colors used to mix the secondary and all the other use in that wheel. Primary colors are specific to each wheel due to properties of that medium. So traditional paint, pigments, etc., we have the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, and those are used to mix the secondary colors, right? Red and yellow make orange and so forth. In light, red, green, and blue light is required to mix the other colors. So red and green light combined make yellow, and green and blue light combined make cyan. Notice there's no cyan or magenta in the traditional color wheel. So blue and red light combine to make magenta light, but we do not see that in paint. We just don't have a, these colors being mixed together using paint. We can have magenta color, but it's, used, it's mixed differently. We'll get to that another time. Subtractive color wheels based on printing processes. So we have cyan, magenta, and yellow like we have in our home printers or in commercial printers, and uh, those colors are required to mix the secondary and all the other colors in that color wheel. So we have the traditional additive and subtractive wheels. Each one includes a unique set of primary colors, a unique set of uh, secondary colors, and then the tertiary colors are the three colors, uh, or I'm sorry, are the six colors that are in between the primary and secondary. So in the additive, red and yellow make orange. So that color is placed between. In the traditional color, we'll notice it's different. Red and orange produce red orange. So each system is just a little bit different. Uh, the traditional color wheel, again, red and blue um, make violet, right? So these are the secondary colors, uh, red and yellow make orange, etc. So you, you understand that when we mix any two primaries together, we get a secondary color. When we mix a primary and a secondary color, it's just got more of the primary color in it here to make red orange. In this case, for um, yellow orange, it just has more yellow in the mix and so forth for the other colors. So we've got yellow-green, for example, between yellow and green. And between green and cyan, we have cyan-green. Okay, so, you know, these primary wavelengths mixed together, though, produce white light. So if we mix all three primary colors together, we get white light. Now, in the traditional, if we mix red, yellow, and blue paint, paint together, the color subtracts out and, you know, it neutralizes. So it, it's, it's more of a muddy gray, but we're using black for um, illustration purposes. You know, the red, green, and blue light combine to make pure white light. So it adds up to the white light. And the same thing in the subtractive color wheel, the primary colors mix together, neutralize each other. Now, if you mix two, you get another color, right? Any two, you, you get another color, but you mix all three together, they neutralize. So it's kind of black or muddy gray. We actually add black to produce the deeper tones when printing, you know, for our for inks, that's why we have black ink. I mean, just to print black, we could use cyan, magenta, and and yellow together. It would give us a muddy, dull gray. We would get that high contrast black. So we have to add black. Naming the color wheels are related to subtractive and additive color mixing. Of course, the traditional color wheel comes from mixing paints and. Um, the, the term subtractive applies to the subtractive printing processes, even though both the tr traditional and subtractive color systems, when mixing the primary colors together, produce a black, okay? So notice then we 
produce um, when we add black, the colors are a little bit different. Now with paint, you know, we do add black to mix some paints. On if we're mixing them on a digital media like using software to approximate what a color wheel would look like mixing paint. But if you mix yellow and blue paint together, you get a color that's a little bit darker green than say you might get if you have only a certain amount of green in it. But notice if we use the additive color wheel, you mix yellow and um, green together, uh, or I'm sorry, if you mix um, yellow and cyan together to get a green, and then you add some black to it, the K, which stands for black, to, to produce more rich tonality, it's a different color than the pure color. So the subtractive color mixing processes, um, we add black to get more, more of a true dark value for printing processes, okay? Uh, so notice that there's a difference between mixing paint, how we approximate mixing paint using digital media, than we see when we actually mix two colors of, of pigment, pigmented paint together. So there's a little bit of black in this particular mix, and the reason for that is it's a different green when mixing blue paint and yellow paint together than what we would get when we mix pure light of yellow and cyan together. It produces this kind of a green. Okay, so there are differences. For more color options, we can produce a 24-step color wheel. So we'll have the three primary, three secondary, six tertiary colors, plus 12 intermediate hues. Okay, so here are three different versions of 24-step color wheels. Lots more colors in between, okay? And in this one, I laid it out so that I can add, you know, I've added circles in the center. So I've got a 24-step color wheel for each one of these. Uh, and I can put tints, tones, and shades. And here I've got some examples of tints, tones, and shades so that we can explore that a little bit better. Notice that I only did tints, tones, and shades for the 12 colors and left those uh, intermediary colors blank just so you can get a sense of what those colors look like. The intermediary colors are going to be more subtle. Here I went the opposite direction. In the center I used um, uh, shades. The outer or the center ring I used uh, tones, which is a, mi a mix of the color plus uh, black and white. Shades is a mix of that color plus only black. And then uh, tints are, is a mix of that color plus just white. So you can see the different effect of shades, tones, and tints. Here we have um, color mixing exercises. So if we start with a pure U, to modify saturation and value maintaining a consistent U, we add an achromatic, right, white, black, or gray. So if we want to do something, a monochrome palette, whether using paint or digital media or printing, we would start with that, the same color, monochrome, one color, and then add white to make tints, add black to make shades, and then here's we can add uh, gray, a very light gray. It's going to make tones, and it has a different quality than tints, and that gets lighter in value. Here we can get darker in value by adding a darker gray, and we can actually maintain a fairly consistent value where it's almost the same. If you convert this to grayscale, it's good, the whole row is going to look like the same gray. But notice when you see it in color, you get a nice transition. So if you're looking for, we like this value, but we want a slightly different color, a little bit more neutral, you can add a little bit more gray to the mix. Or if you want a little bit more color, but you want it softer, more neutral than the pure color, you add a, a little less gray to the mix. Here's what that looks like in grayscale. Notice I've taken the color out, and that looks like a consistent value. Here you see it progresses to light, progresses to dark, progresses to a lighter value, progresses to a darker value, not as dark as the shades go, but close, definitely gets darker, and here it's consistent and even value of gray. So color strategies or color harmonies, there are lots of examples that we can use monochrome. You choose one color. These are two examples of one color. Try it. Three colors that are equidistant from each other on the color wheel. Okay, Tetrad, four colors that are equidistant uh, to each other on the color wheel. Essentially two sets of complements. Complements are two colors, one on either side, you know, two colors directly across from each other on the color wheel. And they have kind of interesting interactions. Uh, split complement is when you take a color, choose a color, and then you ch instead of choosing the color directly opposite it, you choose the two colors on either side. It just expands it a little bit more. That's a split complement. And analogous, two or three colors 
or use, that's another name for color, next to each other on the color wheel so that it cre creates a more harmonious effect. Key is another thing, key and value. High key, lighter, brighter, more vivid, more intense, like wow, very bright. Intermediate, somewhere in the middle, and low key, darker. And then when it gets too dark, it's you can't see the color anymore, it just drops out. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking to use color, high key, bright, intense, lighter in value, intermediate, somewhere in the middle, grayer, uh, and then low key, darker. Okay, and it's all okay to mix a little bit of intermediate into a low key just to get some, some distinction in value. Color temperature, another very important aspect of color theory. A warm and cool color. Warm colors are associated with heat, light, the sun, vi vibrant, intensity, warmth, uh, and cool. Oops, where did I go from there? There we go. And um, cool colors are associated with, you know, water, cool skies, cool temperatures, cool green, uh, you know, sitting in the forest, you know, floating around on an ice flow. Those are kinds of the, the kind of things that we associate with um, cool colors. And it, you know, it relates to nature. Borderline colors can be perceived as either warm or cool, depending on how they're used. So if you, you place yellow-green, for example, next to you know blue and, and cyan blue, it's going to appear a little bit warmer. If you place this yellow-green paint color next to violet and blue, it's going to appear warmer because it's got some yellow in the mix. So everything is relative. Okay, so with a solid grasp of color systems and strategies, artists and designers get to control the color and convey a message to produce effective work. Now don't forget to utilize good design principles for a strong composition and have fun.